Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Hendrik Ehrenstein. I will be giving a short lecture on annotations and their role in the implementation and development of deep learning. Um, I have a relatively broad background uh, in relation to the MIRT, medical imaging and radiation therapy, where my focus lies on radiation protection and radiology. However, I'm also involved with uh, tutoring, mentoring, bachelor research and in artificial intelligence. Over the last couple of years, this focus of the interest on artificial intelligence actually has taken uh, a hold and I've been involved in our research agenda uh, on two themes. One is dose optimization and image quality and the other, of course, is AI itself. Um, as of September 2022, I will be starting as a PhD student at DASH, um, hence the invitation to give a short lecture on annotations. The reason we are talking about annotations is their role in supervised learning. Supervised learning is a approach to train a deep learning algorithm, which is actually a subsection of artificial intelligence, as most of you are likely to know already. Um, in traditional programming, we had the data, we knew the rules, or we thought we knew the rules, and we used those rules to write a program, and the program was able to derive the answers from the data. It's something we still use, of course. However, depending on your case, your implementation, uh, we can choose for machine learning or deep learning uh, with a supervised approach in it. Um, in that approach, it's important that we have not only the data, of course, however, we also need the answers. And given the data and the answers, the machine itself, the AI, is able to derive the rules which it can use to uh, diagnose new images, for instance. Now, here's a relatively new example, relatively new I'm saying here. Um, when implementing or designing a UNET approach for image segmentation, you have a standard uh, X-ray image in this case of the chest the lungs. And uh, the focus in this implementation was on the detection of, of pneumothorax, so collapsed lungs. So on the left, you have a standard conventional uh, radio the image of the lungs. And on the right, you have a segmentation of the collapsed lung itself. Training the UNET structure with a huge amount of data, the AI itself is able to make predictions on a new set of data. And that's why we develop AI, because the new data can be trained or trained, diagnosed at an incredible speed and often with uh, very impressive uh, results as well. Annotations are something not only restricted to images, of course, uh, it's relevant to text audio uh, analysis, uh, and in text you can look at the intent, the sentiment, or the semantics, and in audio um, it's not only focused at language itself, which is, of course, uh, very complex because there's a huge difference between um, UK English and uh, European Dutch, for instance, which is, I think, a dead ringer. However, there is a difference between um, UK English and US English, and sometimes AI systems have trouble detecting the differences and making false predictions. Audio uh, analysis can also be used in predictive maintenance. If a machine starts making uh, a different noise, for instance, it might be wise to pick up a uh, wrench and start to maintain the machine. However, that's way out of my expertise. And uh, given images, you can look at the fact that uh, an image might contain a certain pathology, a cancer for image, which is a label. Uh, we don't know where it is and um, most specifically if you want to know where it is you need a segmentation and um, i think this is a very uh, fitting example of why we need uh, annotations this uh, is a section of images uh, me as a proud father to be honest um, however, the descriptions between or below the images are derived from the AI of PowerPoint itself, and it is quite good at writing down what is in the image. 
Um, the second image is my eldest son, uh, not a very specific uh, description. The third image is uh, my two and a half year old twins sitting on their uh, pram. Um, again, the descriptions are okay, not very specific, but um, given the task the PowerPoint AI has developed, it, it does its thing. However, if we, if we upscale the difficulty, and go into a very specific situation, you will see that PowerPoint has trouble picking up certain nuances. Technically, it is right. This is a group of people standing in a room, a group of two people, to be honest. I know there are more people here, but there are only two in the image. Um, however, we as, as humans are able to derive more context from this image, you see someone wearing white clothes. Well, most likely to be someone uh, within healthcare. You see a lot of red stuff on the floor, which we might be able to derive that it's likely blood. Um, I know for certain that this is blood. Um, and the AI PowerPoint users isn't trained for this. If you want to train PowerPoint's AI for these specific images, you need very specific annotations. And um, depending on what you are developing an AI for, you need specific data or you need less specific data. One problem we are running into is that every image you want to annotate um, is very time consuming. It's very labor intensive to annotate a lot of data for AI to derive any specific meaning from. And uh, keeping with the example of the PowerPoint AI, it is not developed to um, derive a context from a trauma situation or a CT image. I'm not even going to dare uh, ask PowerPoint to, to describe me this CT image because I already know the results, by the way, but uh, you can try it for yourself, of course. Um, if you want to do that, you need a lot of data. I'm talking specifically at radiology here. You have radiation therapy, you have mechanics, you have physics, and um, that, that, that's not a task we are up to. When we're looking into a more specific developments, for this example, the, the segmentation of muscles in a CT slice at Lombo 3. Um, this is a relatively kind, time consuming task, and this is only three of the, well, multiple uh, muscle groups uh, there, and four of the, the multiple muscle groups there, sorry. And um, this took I think it was 10 minutes per slice uh, starting off. Uh, there was a group of uh, students who did this for me, which I am very lucky uh, with, of course. However, a lot of researchers have to dissect, segment, annotate their own images or have to find a radiologist who was able to um, do that work because you need a certain level of expertise. Um, and therefore, it takes a lot of work. It's very labor intensive. And um, that's one of the things which is holding the implementation and the development of AI back. However, we are making steps and speeding this process up. You have several uh, technical solutions to it. One of the is the semi-supervised learning approach in which you only annotate part of the data and let the algorithm itself derive meaning from the rest of the data. And uh, you have synthetic data augmentation. It's classic data augmentation to refer to like this is um, actually uh, originated by turning the images slightly, shearing it, uh, zooming in and out, which is a very classic uh, augmentation approach. However, you also have synthetic data augmentation, which means you make new images which aren't real from an existing data set of real images. I have an example here. On the right, you have the real images. On the left, you have the fake images. And um, research is being performed, and it is very interesting to see that this data is actually uh, useful in training an algorithm because it expands the amount of data you have to train your algorithm. And another way 
uh, which is actually an addition to the above two, is adaptive annotation. And one of the items I've experienced with is uh, Monai from NVIDIA, um, which actually means that if you have a set of images, you start annotating the first one, there is an algorithm running in the background which takes up certain um, analysis from uh, what you've done, certain results, sorry, and uh, when you go over to the second image, it's able to make a small prediction on what you've seen, therefore speeding up uh, the annotation process. And every time you annotate a new image, the adaptive annotation actually learns from you what you have done, and therefore it is a a uh, cycle which actually speeds up. In the example, Monai uh, is um, one of the examples, by the way, is the um, segmentation of the spleen, in which um, the original image took six minutes, if I'm correct, and somewhere further along the process, after several images, it no longer took six minutes, but it took one minute. Therefore, you have a large amount of uh, profit in relation to time. Well, there's a lot going on. You can uh, go towards it more pragmatically, of course. Um, quote unquote crowdsourcing solution. Uh, everyone's familiar with um, the images we are actually tagging for Google and other uh, companies. However, uh, in a more clinical setting, you can set up an infrastructure, which we have done uh, within the D-Health uh, Annotation Lab, it's, which is a, a cooperation between the University of Groningen and the University Medical Center Groningen and the Hanse University of Applied Sciences. And um, that infrastructure is actually very quick and easy to implement as the medical data is relatively easy accessible for students from the university or the applied university and therefore we are very easy it is very easy to um, approach students and other professionals to perform these annotations for us and there we are actually running into a um, a difficulty in relation to expertise, of course, we have to be honest about that. However, uh, research performed by a colleague of mine, Martina Seely, uh, with uh, together with the University of Brussels, actually showed uh, by uh, several using be several bachelor theses that the uh, ICC uh, for segmentating muscle groups is incredibly high when students only had MIRT students specifically had only a limited amount of schooling in the segmentation and um, the anatomy of the muscles was very easy to annotate for these students. We don't know uh, in relation to pathology so for instance if you want to uh, segment a tumor which is a very diffuse uh, outline, it's, it might be harder, but um, the normal anatomy is very easy to segment. Okay, this is my quick run through of AI and the role of annotations there. Um, just closing down, we see a increasing interest in AI at the Hans University. And uh, one of these things is the informal group, the Hans machine learning community, which I'm spearheading. Education is slowly but surely gaining more and more uh, focus on AI, um, not as a main focus for the MIRT, for instance, but we know that AI will make an impact on radiology and radiation therapy. So our students need to know something about it. Uh, nursing, human resources, uh, roughly every department is picking it up and to some degree. However, there are more generic overarching modules being developed uh, AI and group, AI and profession, uh, by uh, Jan Ballier and Talco Dijkhuis, for instance, which aims to bring together students from the technical side with the less technical side, for instance, uh, ICT students with nursing students, therefore coupling the technical knowledge with the domain knowledge and letting them develop an AI um, for an educational purpose, which actually reflects the multidisciplinary disciplinary approach which is needed for the development of AI. 
research has a lot going on, way too much for me to, to talk about here. Rick Groenboom and Willand Alkma, I think, are two uh, important uh, lecture, uh, lecturers, uh, professors there, sorry. And uh, Talco Dijkhuis uh, is focused on uh, research and, well, me too, as per September, but a lot of other colleagues uh, are too as well. And last but not least, we have the D-Health uh, Lab, uh, which is a project at the Hanse, uh, which is a collaboration with uh, several partners, one of which is the Rijksuniversiteit, University of Groningen, but also the UNCG, the University Medical Center Groningen. Okay, if you have any questions left, feel free to email me, uh, I will get back to you. If you want something to watch, a documentary or something, uh, the column on the left might be interesting. If you want something to read, pick the column on the right. I think it's very important to keep in mind that AI offers us a lot of chances. We need it to keep our healthcare system running. We need it to keep our society running. However, there are a lot of drawbacks uh, in the implementation and development of AI, and we need good education in relation to this. For now, thank you, and hopefully uh, until soon. Cheers, bye.